In this video, we're going to talk about layer masks and how to use them. So if you're not currently familiar with how to do ray casts as well as how layers work in Unity, the two previous videos I made to this are kind of related on the same topic. So I'd recommend checking those out first. But if you're already familiar with the basics of how to use layers in a ray cast, then just follow along and we'll jump right in here. In the last video, I showed you how we can make the train use layers so that it collides with the barrels or sometimes passes through them. Now we're going to take that a bit further here and start using layer mass so we can make something collide or check for multiple layers instead of just one. So I mentioned in the previous video, we did sort of see a layer mask already. So if we go to our main camera, the culling mask that we use here, this is actually using a layer mask. So if you make it public or serialized, when you see it in the inspector, it's going to have a drop down like this and it lets you select multiple layers. This is how you interact with a layer mask in the inspector. We can also do this in code, which I'm going to show how to do in the next video after this one. So let's get started here. Let's go to the barrel script that I made. All it does is check if we collided with something on the layer of train and then we cause the barrels to explode. We instantiate an explosion prefab. So now I'm going to leave this as it is, but in the same method, I'm going to make a raycast here. So I'm just going to make a raycast hit. I'll call this hit. And then I'm going to do if physics dot raycast. And now the one I want to use here is pretty far in the options. Let's see where it is. Okay, so this is the one I want to use here, 11. It's going to take in an origin for our ray, a direction, a distance, and then a layer mask. And it's showing you a layer mask is just a type integer. And that's all it actually is. In the next video, I'm going to show you why that's the case and how we can modify that in code. But for this video, I'm going to keep it pretty basic and just show you how to use a simple layer mask. So let's start this here. For the origin, I'm going to do transform.position. And if we look where the barrels are, if I select the barrels, the pivot point is near the bottom. So I'm actually going to raise the, the point of the ray cast a bit higher. Because what I want to do is shoot this ray at the train to see when we hit the train. And if we do it this low, it's probably going to go under it. So I'm going to do transform.position plus I'll do vector three dot up. So that'll be one unit up on the Y axis. Okay, and then we need our direction. So if I look at this, it's using the X for vector three dot right, which is one on the X. And it's gonna shoot the ray this way. So I wanna do negative vector three dot right or vector three dot left. So that's gonna cause the ray to go towards the train on the X axis. So let's add that in here. I'll do vector three dot left. Okay, and for a distance, I'm just gonna put in 25. We don't need anything specific. And now this is where our layer mask comes into play. So right now we haven't actually created a layer mask yet. One thing you can do here is similar to how I showed how you can get the names of layers and convert the layer to a name. We can actually get the name of a layer and make it a layer mask using a command layer mask and then dot get mask. And then in here, if we put the name of a layer, so if I put train, oops, we don't want a semicolon there, we want a comma. I think I have one too many there, okay. Now this is a simple way that you can make a layer mask if it's only one layer that you want to check. So if you're making a ray cast or anything else that's requiring something of type layer mask, if you just want the one layer and you know the name, you can fill this in anywhere and that's going to create a layer mask out of it. So let's test this out here. So right now this raycast is only going to run this code in the if statement if it does hit something on layer train. So let's just debug.log in here and I'm going to do hit train. And right now with this method I picked here, we're not actually using raycast hit. We don't need it yet, but I'm going to leave it there and we'll use it in a moment. So let's go test this out first. So let's go to the console. I'm going to clear that. And now essentially it's going to take one point up here, create a ray cast, shoot it to the train. And if it hits something on the layer train, it's going to debug hit train. Okay, so that worked, that hit the train. Now we have this tumbleweed here and it's on layer type tumbleweed. So if I make this a bit bigger, I'll just move it up a bit. 
Now, if we run the game, notice it's still hitting the train because it's passing through and it's only looking for anything on the train layer. So it doesn't stop the ray cast until it hits something on train. So it does shoot through this object, but doesn't care about it, then hits the train. Now, if, what if we wanted to check for both of these? So if we wanted to check if it hits either a tumbleweed or a train, we would need to use a full layer mask. So let's go back to our code. So I did already have a variable here of type layer mask called collision layer mask. I'm just gonna delete that to show you how you actually create it. So, okay, so let's just make a layer mask variable. So same as any other variable. I'm just gonna do it private type layer mask. And I'm just gonna call this layer mask with an underscore. You can name it whatever you want. You should pick something that makes sense. So maybe like, like collision layer mask or um, barrel layer mask, what, whatever you prefer. And I'm just gonna add serialized field. So this shows in the inspector. Now let's go back to Unity. We select our barrels. Notice we have layer mask and it defaults to nothing selected. So now in here, what I wanna do is I wanna select tumbleweed and I also wanna select train. So now I have these two different layers selected and if I go to the code, instead of this layer mask dot get mask with train, which is only going to return the train layer, let's replace this with layer mask. And make sure it's lowercase l if you name it the same, not the capital L. Okay, and now we can debug here, hit train or tumbleweed. So let's go test this out. Right now we don't know which it's going to hit. So you know what, just to confirm, I'm going to disable the train. Let's run the game. Now it says hit train or tumbleweed because it's hitting the tumbleweed. Now if I enable the train again, if we go back to our code here, we can just change our ray cast. So I'm gonna remove those. Now we're gonna use a different option for the ray cast. So we're gonna use out with the hit variable that we created here. And again, if you're not familiar with ray casting, check out my previous video on ray casting. It'll explain what we're doing here. Okay, so we have our hit. We need to put our distance again. So let's put in our layer mask of just name layer mask. Make sure it's a lowercase l, not a capital. And now we see it's using type 15 for the, the ray cast. So origin, a direction, the hit info, distance, and then a layer mask. So this tells it what it can do. And now that we have this with the, the hit info, instead of outputting either hit train or tumbleweed, we can do hit, and then all of the information inside of that hit variable stores what we hit. So we can do hit dot collider dot name. And that's gonna output the name of the game object that has the collider we hit. So let's go debug this here and run our game again. Okay, so here we hit the tumbleweed and then you see we also hit the train. And now if we disable the tumbleweed, okay, you see right away we hit the train. And if we enable it again, because it's first, it's gonna hit the tumbleweed and then return out. So it's not gonna say it hit the tumbleweed and the train because as soon as that raycast hits an object, then it stops. So the only time it hits the train is once the train's past the tumbleweed. Okay, so that's the basics of layer mass and how you can use them. Common uses for them is raycasting like we did here. Also using a physics overlap sphere or overlap box, anything like that, where it's checking if you hit something inside of a collision those are the most common places to use a layer mask. So if you're not familiar with overlap spheres, you can check out my other video on that. I'll link it below as well. And you can do the exact same thing with a layer mask. So you could do something similar like checking a circle around your object. And if anything inside that circle is on the layer mask, it's gonna return for you. Okay, so I hope that helped. If you have any questions of that, comment below. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna get another video out soon that continues on on this concept. And we're going to cover bit mask, which is what a layer mask is made up of and how you can modify the values in it inside your code. So then you don't have to go to the inspector to do all those checkboxes. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.